Okay, this is a segment I'm going to do here uh, called Fix That Shit, where we're going to fix shit that needs to be fixed. Um, as you can see, I have the Academy Headser here that I recently completed. Uh, this one's, I called done and then put a bunch of pictures up and got some feedback and realized that there was a couple things I needed to do. And one of those was add pigments to the underside. As you can see, the underside's a little kind of filthy where we have runoff from where I did the stuff on the sides. Uh, the pigments on the on this on the sides of the hall there uh, I also tested some oil brusher here to see if I wanted to use oil brusher on this build I decided not to go with the oil brushers and went with the traditional oils for the for the rendering so the underside is pretty filthy and gross looking uh, you got some tide marks there some other stuff uh, my thought was I was gonna put this on a base and nobody will ever see that so why worry about it but um, the more I thought about it, the more I can't live with it because I need to get some pigments under here. There needs to be some pigments. As you can see on the front and on the back, on the rear hull there, uh, I, did the, I did the mud up, up the, um, the front and rear armor plates. Uh, and that needs to be consistent on the bottom as well. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to put those on now. And I thought I would just video it and show you how I'm going to do it. Uh, for this, for the pigments on this model, I used I use three or four. I used AK's Dark Earth pigment here. I used MIG's Dark Earth, which is different than AK's. And then I used the Russian Earth from MIG also. Um, now, following along with Mike Rinaldi's book, uh, as I did with the oil paint rendering, I really kind of, I didn't do the, the pigments the same way. I applied them with the same technique, but I didn't do the mix up, uh, three different shades. Uh, I kind of regret not doing that on this one. I'm going to do that in the future. We'll talk about that, but basically you mix up a, a light, medium, and dark version out of, out of different uh, multiple color pigments to give, give more depth uh, to the pigment because you have uh, real dirt and muds is, is varied. It's not all monotone. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the, the most prominent darker color here that I used on this was dark earth, and I'm going to start with that on the bottom uh, as the base, and then I'll come back with some of the lighter ones and, and, and maybe put some in places. Uh, what I'm going to do for this is... I'm gonna since I'm gonna be layering them on the whole bottom. I'm gonna start with some X20A here. Uh, let's open the pigments. You can use X20A as a fixer. Uh, I'm gonna use that as a fixer, and then I'm probably gonna use the the MIG the MIG fixer here as well. Uh, with the X20A, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dampen the surface, and we're gonna get a, a brush that we're just gonna use for this, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wet the bottom of the model, and and. and this shouldn't cause any damage. The the paint here that I use is Mission, but any acrylic, any, any um, uh, the X20A will work over any paint. It's not going to damage the paint as long as it's dry and you don't get crazy with it and scrub it. Uh, so I'm just going to wet the surface there. That'll give the pigment something to stick on. Uh, the brushes I use for this are just cheap uh, brushes uh, that I get from uh, a local craft store. Uh, they're not they're not very high quality. They're they're not very good. Uh, they're low Cornell, but they're they're very low uh, low end ones. Uh, so I'm just going to use those, and 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 I'll dip, dab it in the pigment here, and and then just we'll just kind of dab it on. And I'm going to cover the whole bottom. That's why I'm not really worried about about all the ugliness there. I do it inside a box lid here because uh, I got to be honest with you. I am I, I ever since I was a kid, I hate dirty hands, and I hate I just hate dirt and 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 being dirty and and this stuff gets everywhere and I don't want to clean it off my bench so as you can see we just dab it on there like that and it's over the x20a and it's going to it's going to dry um and that'll hold it and if it builds up a little heavy in areas I just kind of knock it off I don't want it uh so built up I don't want to play with it too much because that smears it if you if you want to give it if you want to give it streaking like it's been splashed on a front front plate or something that works but you don't want to do that on the bottom where it would just be kicked up. Now it looks like the X20A is going to hold that pretty pretty well. It should work. And you can see here I didn't even bother with the bottom of the tracks with the weathering and the, and putting the metal on because it is going to go on a base. It's going to be it's going to be secured down to a base where it won't be picked up or anything. But I but you can looking at it from the front if you get low enough like I did in some of the lower um, low profile pictures I took you can see up under there so we're just gonna we're gonna take care of that uh, 
Okay. That looks good. I'm going to come back here with this lighter. Now, the MIG Dark Earth is lighter than the Ammo Dark or the AK Dark Earth. So. You can see the it's really hard to see the difference there in, in the shade, uh, but there there's a there's a subtle difference. I uh, forgot to get I forgot to wet the bottom of the the bogies there, so I'm gonna. And you could stipple it in like that too if you want. It gives it more of a kind of rubbing it in gives it more of a dusted look. Uh, and the great thing about about the pigments is you can come back with washes, oils, and washes, and and do some other stuff. And 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 we'll do that as well I'll show you after after we get these down I'm just going back and forth between the two colors here nothing nothing fancy I just want to get them all in place and then we're gonna we're gonna set them down and I'm gonna open the Russian earth which is a Another color we'll add here. I'm going to tap the brush off and try to get a little clean over here. And it's a different shade. I'm going to add it around the fronts here. It's, it's even a little darker. I'm not going to do it over the whole area because when you look at it, when it's when it's down on its on its tracks upside right side up, uh, you can't see all the way under here. You can't you can't see this no matter how hard you try. You can see the first about uh, quarter or so. So just going to vary up the color here. There's no need to do it over the whole area. Okay, and there we go. Now <clears throat> we're going to come back with some fixer another. One thing you can do is you can get the airbrush and you can put this in the airbrush and, and, and what you want to do is you put it in the airbrush, turn the airbrush on, hold the airbrush away from the model, spray it to where it comes out over the model and then falls down on the model. If you spray it directly at the model, it's just going to blow it everywhere, obviously. So you don't want to do that. Another, another method is to just uh, get the pigment fixer and this is basically an, a clear enamel. Um, you get the fixer and you can use a brush. I need to get a clean brush from over here uh, like uh, just another cheap brush this is a number um, well that one may be a little too far gone well, these cheap brushes don't last very long but they're they're really cheap <clears throat> you can buy them for doing this sort of thing um, let's see oh no no this was the one I, I got out that I meant to use and then I did it in the in the pigment you don't want to put it in the pigment you start to get a mess so I'll use an eyedropper and just kind of on raised areas here don't just you don't want to disturb the pigment if you do you can come back you can you can also do this with the brush that's kind of what my initial plan was was to just dab with a brush but the brush I had for that has seemed to have walked away it might be on the floor so in the interest of just moving right along we'll do this now you just kinda want it to spread out you really shouldn't even need to do it over the whole area because we put that X20 down now I only do that first coat of X X20 down on the surface when we're trying to cover a whole surface like this. If you want, if you want the built-up stuff covering the whole surface, 
Uh, and over time, you can see, you know, it's not getting everywhere, but over time, if we sit here and just watch it, it'll it'll start to creep through capillary action to all the areas. So, you don't really need to overdo it. Just try not to disturb the pigment. And it's wet now, and it's good. When it dries, it will be a little darker. So you got to take that into account. Um, you could you could get the hair dryer and try to and, and dry it on low. Uh, that helps a little bit. But I find uh, with this much uh, pigment fixer down and everything, it it doesn't it doesn't dry as as fast as it would if it was just a little touch here or there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to try to dry it, and I'll come back when it's dry, and we'll look at it and see what needs to be done. Okay, I've used the hair dryer here to dry it off. Uh, it's not completely dry as you can tell because it's still darker than what you see on the front plate here. But it's dry enough that we can uh, do some more to this. Uh, I'm liking where it's at uh, because it's on the bottom and, and, and it's not going to be seen. Um, there's not really a, a lot of point in, in um, fine-tuning it, I don't, I don't think. Uh, but I am going to go back with some more of the MIG. Dark Earth, the lighter version, because uh, I wanted a little lighter in some areas, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little more of that down on here. I want to build up some more in a couple a couple spots that I see, um, especially along the front here, since that's gonna be seen. I need to get some more on the on this bogey here. And because the previous layer is still a little wet, it'll help hold it a little bit. I still, this spot right here where it kind of ran off from the fixer. So, I'm going to come back now and I'm going to use the X28 because it's a little thinner. And it should, uh, should dry a little faster than the pigment fixer. Just on that ray spot there, right on the edge there, because I got a good build up here. Just kind of touching it, letting it do its thing. Uh, get the I get some more on this bogey. Come on. It's okay that you have bare spots, I think, because, you know, it's not going to uniformly cover everything. Hopefully you can see with the three with the three different colors uh, that we've got some variety here that looks like different, different types of earth. And that should work its way in. And, again, um... I'll let it sit and then we'll come back and look at it. Okay, we're back again. Uh, second round of, of pigments uh, are mostly dry. Uh, there, there's still a little, a little bit of moisture there because it's still a little darker than it's going to turn out to be. Uh, what I wanted to do now was, was show you something that you could do, uh, uh, that you should do, uh, to 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 add a little uh, a little interest. Now, uh, I did this on the on the sides. Uh, I'm going to use this fresh engine oil uh, by Ammo, um, and around the bogies here is, is somewhere that would leak oil, uh, and you would have oil big build up. And, and one powerful tool is to come back over pigments with a, with a wash that I found, uh, and I like this. I use it around the wheels and the bogies, uh, so I'm going to use it here uh, to show you a little bit of effect of, of some oil leakage building up in the dirt uh, and stuff that builds up there. So we're just going to we shake that up really good, and I, I get a brush. Um, this stuff is fairly thick, so I might end up having to thin it, actually. But you could just come around these areas where you might get fuel uh, oil leakage. And remember, don't be uniform here.
Now this won't be seen. Um, it ended up not being seen when I did it on, on, on these areas. You can see down in, Mike can see down in here. Uh, but it, it's a nice effect. You could do this with any color wash uh, to represent any kind of fluid leaks or anything like that. I'll get down in here and, and do something down in here. These little things like this uh, add great effect. I don't. I don't want to. Don't want it to be too uniform here. But there's a there's a plate here under the engine area where there might be some leaking. You see this this armor plate here. It might leak around there. And there you have it. Uh, this is the engine oil. It'll dry with the oily sheen. I really like it. Uh, this is something you could do. You might want to use it on areas where it can be seen more. It adds a lot of interest. Um, there you have it. We fixed that shit. Uh, it looks much better now. So if somebody comes in and looks from up under, uh, they'll be able to see that the, the mud and dirt do carry over there. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.